Amen. Amen. 
Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. So, 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 so the same way when it comes to this idea of what we're dealing with in our life and the idea of how we think and making up our mind, some things that hinder us from moving is our perception of our situations. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, it's, it's, it's not the problem, it's my perception of the problem. Somebody say, I'm hearing this. I'm hearing this. Perception is not sight, it's how you think about what you see. It's not sight, it's how you think about what you see. It's how you feel about what you see. Uh, can we, can we have my water, please? Have my water, man. And, and so in that process, it's, it's one of these things. No, 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 no. If you can bring me that, it's, 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 a, it's a piece in which making sure that when, when we look at things, we got to learn how we think. Not, 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 not how you see the water. I want the water, man. The water. Thank you, thank you. Thank you very much. See, this, this, thank you very much, man. Thank you, thank you. Uh, uh, and so in, 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 the, in the water, you know, it, it's, it's, what is this? This is what? Half, she said half full. Thank you. You must be an optimist. <laughs> see, the optimist, no matter what you hand them, they will see everything half full. That's right. See, but the pessimist is saying it's half empty. And the realist is saying, I'm thirsty. <laughs> <laughs> it's still the same cup of water. Yeah. My problem is, how do you look at your situation? How do you look at your problem? How do you look at it? And what mind do you look at it from? Do I look at it from the optimist mind? Do I look at it from a pessimist mind? Do I look at it from the realist mind? And do I get stuck in that and not apply the word of God to any of it? Come on, somebody say, I'm hearing this. When he says this, the challenge of it is that the idea is perception stops more vision. Perception stops more mission. Perception stops more, watch this, watch this, victory in people's lives than Satan. Because see, if you perceive only through, can I have my glasses for a minute? If you perceive, I'm only doing this because I need the visual learner to learn while I'm learning. I need the audio learner to learn while I'm talking. And then I need the kinesthetic learner. That's the people that only can learn by touching something and seeing something. Because see, all of us are wearing glasses, we just don't say it. See, some of us is wearing fear. Because every time we ask you something, you're afraid. And you don't even look like you got them on, but how you answer is telling us what you see. Some of us is wearing the lens of poverty. Because when we ask you something, the first thing is, I can't afford. And so you're looking, oh. Okay. I'm looking through something, and I don't even know that what I got on me is affecting what's really going on around me, and it's messing with what I'm doing. So sometimes it's fear. Because soon you ask, you think, oh, what's going to go wrong? Sometimes it's failure. If I try it, I'm going to blow it. You would even try it, now. the perception of the thing, the perception of the thing has stopped us from moving. And so now i got to make my mind up so I can move forward. If you change your perception, you might change your condition. If you stop going home saying, that crazy house, that jacked up house, it's all a mess when I get there. No, go home. Somebody that don't have a house was given your house that blessed house. Same house. That blessed house. Oh, God, I got a better than a dirty dish. Meaning some food in the house. And we complain about it. But somebody will see what you got with them totally different from it. Say, my neighbor, I need the Lord to change my perception. It's the perception of fear that caused Adam to run from the God that loved him. It was the perception, watch this, of the affections and that, that, that sense of control that wiped him out. It is the act of the perception of Peter that made him give up his future. All those things affected him. That's why we come to crisis. If any man be in Christ, change your perception. Oh, you know the scripture. If anybody be in Christ, behold, be whole. Old things are passing away. Get rid of your old way of looking at yourself, looking at your life, looking at your future, looking at where you are, looking at who you are, looking at what you did, looking at where you are. Get rid of the old mind and let the new mind of Christ be in and let all things become new. Come on. Change my perception. I know y'all didn't have to do it when I came to the kingdom. I had some stuff going on. And one of my eyes jacked up was racism. Yeah, I said it. I said it in church, too. Yes, I did. See, I used to go to the barbershop, and the people at my barbershop, they used to always talk about a certain man keeping us down. Oh. Yeah. Now, I remember now, I grew up in the 60s, so, you know, back then, they, that's what they were saying. In the last 60s, I'd go to the barbershop, get my hair cut, all the older men would say, that man keeping us down. That one man keeping us down. The only problem was, I never met that man in my neighborhood. Yeah. Yeah. Perception. Yes, so, what happens, so, what happens, what happens, Sometimes you can't allow the things to watch this. 
You've been around to block you and hold you, and those old perceptions has to be challenged through the word of God. No, God loves everybody. God is giving grace to everybody. God will came and deliver anybody. And if you can love my God, you can love everybody. But I gotta let him change. That's why he says, let this mind, let not yours, let this mind be in you that was there in Christ Jesus. So I have to change my perception sometimes and allow the word of God to change it. Let's go, bro. He says this. He says, watch this perception that, that moves that includes seeing God in heaven. You gotta see God in heaven. Where you gotta see it at? And in your everyday life. Yes. You gotta see him in every moment. I mean, you gotta be willing to say, when I got up, I saw God. When I got in a car, I saw God. When I was on a road, I saw God. When I got to my job, I still can see God. I can see him everywhere, any situation, that even though this cat was blind, he must be singing that old Negro spiritual. I was blind, but now I see. Why? Because now he's allowing God, watch this, to change his perception. Jesus up. He said, he came to Bethesda and they brought him a blind man. They saw him that he would touch him. He took him by, he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the town. And when he had spit on his eyes and put his hands on him, he asked him if he saw anything. Hey, Renee. Can you see God? In your situation. Or are you blind? You see, sometimes the challenge becomes this. It becomes one that he, he came to Bethesda. They want to come to this man that's already blind. And spiritually, we're blind until we meet Jesus. But watch what Jesus does with this man. They wanted him just to touch him. But Jesus says, before I touch him, i got to take him out of the atmosphere he was born in. Ooh. Ooh, come on. Because sometimes the only perception you'll see is the one you were born in. So whatever the people around you thought, that's what you thought. Come on. And sometimes, Ross says, I gotta be willing to allow the word of God to come and take me out of it. My fault. Jesus is the word of God. In the beginning was the word, and the word was God, and the word is God. And so when the word showed up, the word says, I'm gonna take you out of your situation. I can't even give you a brand new situation until you allow the word of God to get a hold of you and take over who you are. And now that you don't see from yourself, I see through the word. I see through the spirit. And how now you know? He spit on it. Yes. Say, I ain't even like that. Uh -huh. Sometimes when God says something to you, you don't like it. You don't like it. But here's the blessing it is. Jesus is the fullness of God. So if anything come out of Jesus, it's God. <laughs> <laughs> so he literally, him who is the word, spits, and so anything of him is the word. So the word now gets in his vision. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Then he says, my word is spirit and life. So now when he spit on him, he spit life and spirit and the word on him and changes his whole perception. This cat didn't see nothing. Now you see God. Matter of fact, I love Jesus because he's patient too. Because he says, what do you see? Cat says, I meant like men like walking like trees. This, this, I, I see something, but I might not see all of it. And what I like about that is this, Jesus don't cut him off because he don't do the verse. Yes. Jesus don't cut him off because he's in process. Jesus don't cut him off. Jesus says, listen, I know you tripped last week, but you're standing up this week. I, I know you was good. I know, I know, I know you did bad, but you're in process, and you still got the word with you. You ain't ran away from the word. You ain't ran away from the church. You might can't see all of it, but you got some of it, and he works with them because he still has God around him. If you can see just a little bit of God in your situation, that's enough to change it. <sighs> what he said, the blind man by the hand. It's amazing to me, take your neighbor. He might have to take you out of your familiar place. You change your familiar place. Watch this. Sometimes, watch this. I can't, I couldn't see. I'm gonna tell you the truth. Just pray for me. I said, Lord, when you told us to sell the building, you ain't tell me where we were going. He said, I couldn't because you wouldn't believe me. Matter of fact, I didn't want to believe you. I'm gonna tell you the truth. My perception was, yeah, we're going to sell this building, you're going to give us a building, and in that same area right around the city of Chester, you're going to be right there, I got it. And I spent a year and a half, watch this, looking for the wrong thing. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm going to pass it and tell the truth. I'm going to pass it and tell the truth. I'm going to pass it and tell the truth. I'm going to pass it and tell the truth. I'm going to pass it and tell the truth, Ed. You know what I'm saying? Had money, was ready for it, was like, I'm looking only at Chester. I'm just going to be, got to be right here, got to be right here, got to be right here. How many of y'all going to service? Okay. See, sometimes my perception, watch this, I didn't even want to hear anything else. I didn't want to go behind. Because sometimes, watch this, in order to get a new perception, you got to be willing to leave what you're familiar with. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. So sometimes you get, and look, look what he had. Look what was 
we're waiting on, watch this, if I let his vision be my vision. Mm. Woo! Tell you, neighbor, I'm going to shout right here. Hallelujah. We got to wait. God got something greater for you. Yeah. If you ain't seen it yet, that's because, watch this, you ain't seen it. You might be looking too small. Yeah. Might be looking too small. Might be looking too low. Might be looking, watch this, the wrong direction. Hallelujah. He says, listen, I can't do it with a familiar thing because sometimes when you do something around familiar people, all they can see is your flesh yeah. and they can't see your purpose. Oh, that's right. Ooh, Shabba. Mm. All right, okay. What I like about it too, he says the word takes him and then he takes him out of an old location to a new location. That's why sometimes God got to move you because he wants to trying to move you to a new place of seeing you too. Yeah. Not only that, but he says, watch this, I want you to come out of the familiar place, but I've changed his perception. He gives him his DNA, puts his spirit on it, put his word on it by spitting on him. Then he helps him through the process, but then here's the other side that I like. He does it a twofold. He both spits on him, which means the word is coming to him. So he got the, the word of God coming to him, but then he says, I put my hands on you. Yeah. You know that's the process for the entire church. God will continue to speak his word and then put you in the Bible. Speak his word and keep you in the Bible. Yeah, he'll use his hand, his fivefold, and then keep on doing the fivefold by this and the body by that, the fivefold by this and the body by that, the fivefold by this. Why? So you can keep getting, watch this, more sight and more wisdom so you can get clarity about your vision, where you're going, who you are, what you're supposed to be doing, so you can get a kingdom vision rather than an earthly vision about who you are. Yeah. And so that you don't have to stay in what you're in, but you can see above where you are and then go further than where you were called. Somebody say, I'm hearing this. Yeah. I like this. He looked at him, he said, said to him, he said, see, I see men's trees walking, and after that, he put his hands on him again. Say, Lord, Lord touch me again. Touch me again. Touch my vision again. Touch my mind again. Touch my thoughts again. I see on one level, but I know there's another level in my life that God wants to move in. God wants to move in. He wants to operate in. And I gotta be willing to let him change my mind so I can move where he wants me to move. Yes. Oh, I love it. I love it. This is upon his eyes. Look upon him again. Then he says, watch this. And the verse says to say, he just got a sight. The Bible says he was restored. Then he saw. Ooh. He says, I'm gonna save you so you can see. See your neighbor? Yeah. That's you. Yeah. He saved you so you can see. Yes. Hey, brother, this is Mark chapter 8, verse 26 says this way. And he sent him away to his house, saying, Neither go into the town, nor tell anybody in the town. What I love about it is Jesus reminding this man what the word says. Says, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Where did that spirit come from? Out of the mouth of God. <laughs> <laughs> But I like this, this. He says in 26, he says, now, now, I'm going to change your perception, but you can't be hanging around old folk with old perceptions. Yeah, cool. Okay, <laughs> look at the verse. He says, do not go back to the same place thinking you're going to get something greater than what you got. Yes. Come on, I was reading this book, and it's scary to death. It's about this guy who's a bull rider, who wanted to be a bull rider. He says, he says I, but I wanted to be a bull rider. And the guy said to me, I'm an amateur, but I want to be a bull rider. He says, well, I want you a professional bull rider. A professional bull rider told me, the first thing you got to do is quit becoming a professional. He said, why? As long as you're around amateurs, you'll think like amateurs. Yeah. Hallelujah. I don't know. I ain't saying that, but I ain't saying that. I'm just saying what he said. Who are you around, and how are they thinking? He says, man, you, 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 you listen, you, if you want to hang, I'm not saying, I ain't saying anybody around you, you understand? Know there's some folk around you, you know good and well, they don't think nothing like you. Matter of fact, they are introducing crazy thoughts, blind thoughts. You trying to figure out, why am I still around them? I don't know, why? Somebody say amen in the air. Now let me show you something real quick. Uh, Bird, go ahead and put it up for me. This is what we look like sometimes. The elephant is held back, not by the puny rope, but by the belief system. Are you? Who told you you can't have? Who told you you can't do? Who told you when you were small, you'll never be? Who, to who told you? And they told you probably be when you were small. Why? Because they, watch this, they, they, they'll sow, uh, watch this, a little seed into a little mind, hoping that that little seed will keep the big mind from growing up. You know what's a terrible thing? To outgrow where you've been, but not leave. Oh, 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 Jesus. How long have you been where you're going to be? Why are you going to be there? I ain't talking about place, I'm just talking about state. Are you hearing me? This elephant was something like 15 tons. 
But because when he was small, they sort of thought by a little, a little hope. It's a terrible thing when you're bigger than what's keeping you. I say it's a terrible thing when you are bigger than what's keeping you. Most of you in here are bigger than the thing that is keeping you. And our problem is I got an old perception about what's holding me. It used to be able to hold me, but if I ever get a perception of the kingdom and what God has brought to me, if I allow the word to get in my eyes, I allow the spirit to get in my vision, if I get to make seen, not from my view, but from heaven's view, about who I am. Hey, Nathan. Hey. It's about time you break free. It's about time you break free. Come on, give me a good shout right there. This man said, nurture great thoughts. If you nurture great thoughts, you'll never, because you'll never go higher than your thoughts. Somebody else said, nothing limits achievement like small thinking, but nothing expands it like possibilities of great thinking when they are unleashed. Mm -mm. Say your neighbor. I gotta think greater than this. I was thinking I'm smarter than this. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking I'm wiser than this. Not just because of me. I got the word in me. I got the spirit of God in me. I got heaven operating around me. Yes. It'd be one thing to stop you, but it, who is gonna stop you and God? Or is this a verse? Whew. Hey, your neighbor, I'm going to move forward. Can I check your perception one more time? All right, help me, bird. Do you know this is the same picture? You know what the problem with this picture is? No, no, it ain't upside down. It's just we're looking at it from one direction. What if somebody looked at your life from a different direction than you? 90% of the time, when we tell somebody something about our story, they are doing what we see. You go, I ain't gonna make it. I'm a guy. I'm gonna lose my mind. I know y'all don't do that. Another person says, You're gonna be fine, child. We get mad at them because we, they don't, we don't think they see our situation. The problem is, you keep seeing the old you, but they keep seeing the new you. You've seen the old pattern, the old mindset, the old thought pattern, all ideas. But watch this. But can you get a view of who you really are in the kingdom? Yeah. Can you get a view of you being a king and a priest? Can you get a view of you being a son and a daughter? Can you get a view of that? If you get a view of that, watch this. Your perception changes. Somebody say hallelujah. Anyhow. hallelujah. Let's go, Bird. He says this in Mark. Back when it goes back here. One other perception you got to get is get a right perception of your own person. Get one of heaven, but then get one of your own person. Say, say, excuse me. Do you even like you? <laughs> Before we even get started about doing anything, because see, you'll sabotage yourself if you don't like yourself. Oh okay, yeah, you'll call self-inflicted wounds that stuff we talked about last week, all that kind of stuff. But right here, I like this. This is Nehemiah. And Nehemiah is dealing with some processes because in our life, the right perception, sometimes the greatest enemy is the one inside of you and me. Sometimes, watch this, issues that formed us by the outside and shaped us on the outside was the worst part of it. That it's not who shaped us, it's what we accepted. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. It's not who shaped us, it's what we accepted. I'll never forget, 10th grade, I was walking down the hallway trying to talk to Pastor Byrne, and this woman said to me, don't be with him, he ain't going to do nothing. Mm. I made my mind up in that moment, you're going to be a liar. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. Now, she helped shape me because she helped me understand two things. That's what she saw, but I've never received what she saw. Yeah. Matter of fact, I never even saw what she saw. At that moment, can you hear me, neighbor? Who said something to you and you believe? Say lie. Because sometimes even God said stuff to people they didn't believe. Moses, come down with me. We're going to deliver Egypt. I'm a stutterer. No, I ain't asked you that. I said you're a leader and you're a deliverer, but you want to tell me who you are. You weren't there when I put H2O and your chemical balance together and put your brain in place. I know who you are and your perception of you. It will mess up you from moving forward in the kingdom. Get in. You a mighty man. Do you not see all this stuff going on around me? Your perception. Perception was mighty man. Yeah. His perception broke, busted, and disgusted. Least of my family. Didn't know about to deliver the entire country. But I had the wrong perception. Amen, neighbor. 
wonder what's your perception of you. What's interesting to me is that I don't want to find a negative one. I want to find a good positive one. It's a good positive one. Nehemiah's building the wall. And while he's building the wall, Sam Valentine God set some stuff up. Matthew came into the house of Shemaiah. And then he comes to the house of And then he comes to the house of Nehemiah. And who was shut up? Say shut up. Now, now he was shut up. Now listen. He was shut up. And he said, let's meet together in the house of God within the temple. And let's shut up. Shut the doors. For they will come and stop you. Yes, in the night. They are going to slay you. Can you name Here's my first problem. Why are you hanging around folk? We have wrong perception of you. Here's the problem when you can tell when they have a wrong perception. It's not even you. It's really them. Yes. Mm, the text says, let the bill, who was shut up. Can I, can I put it the way we, we, we put it? He in a box. Yes. And he's trying to get you to jump in the box with him. Yes. <laughs> come on. Oh, come on. Okay, I knew we were going to have this for the kinesthetic learner. Here we go. I'm trying to put you in a box. Ain't nobody in your family ever did that. You ain't never had no money. You can't dream like that. Why would you do that? Don't even try that. Why would you try to pass away? Why would you go back to school? Why? Why? Get in the box with me. You think, no, I don't, you can't think that. How could you think that? You could not think that God would do that for you. Ain't no way. God would never did that with nobody from our neighborhood. How in the world? You're not even that smart. You didn't even crash it. You didn't do that. You only got a PA. You ain't got a math. You don't got a PA. You don't got, you don't got, you don't got. Say your neighbor. Get away from people in the box. Wrong perception. You know good and well you don't know what you're doing. You ain't never tried nothing like that. You ain't never did it. And what this is is just a box. Fear. That's right. All of those things will hold us in the ideal. And what happens is, guess what? The box is just a box. But you choose to get in it yourself. Now they invite you, the board invited him. Hey, come get in the box. He's in fear, they're gonna kill you. He's living and breathing. He's building a wall. He's protected, but he wants him to hide, uh-oh, in the church. Uh -oh. <laughs> okay, okay, yep, we went there. Cause sometimes in the church, we can't go there. We can't do that, we can't do that. We can't believe God, but I'm in the church. This guy was saying, lock yourself in the church and don't function outside in the kingdom mindset and step over those things and move in all of who you are. Maybe your perception is seeing through the idea of the wrong thing. Do not, that's what happened to Nicodemus. Nicodemus let religion and tradition trap him in the box called church. Got it. Got it. Next time he shows up, Jesus is almost dead. So he misses all of the miracles. All the miraculous, all the power, all the healing. He misses the whole trip. Why? I was in the box. Can I ask you a question? How long you going to stay in the box? Who is it that you like so much to stay in the box? Why do you like the company of being in the box? Because the people that's in the box, their name is not on the book. Nehemiah is it. Why? Because he says this. I like his answer. Please stand. I said, should such a man as me flee? I don't mean no harm. That's called confidence in God. He has seen God protect him from battle to battle to battle to battle to battle. Last, last week, somebody told me I tried to put something out and he beat that. Last week, the week after that, they tried something else that came out and he beat that to that. And now he got a few victories now. Now he realized that I ain't really doing this. Is Jesus really doing this with me, through me, and by me? And he's the one protecting me. Should, should a man such as I am, with the grace of God, with the love of God, with the forgiveness of God, with the goodness of God, with the mercy of God, with the word of God, with the mind of God, should a man like me run? Now ask yourself, why are you running? Woo! You got to know who you are, and the right perception of you will allow you to move forward. But a wrong one will keep telling you to go back. Go back because of your past. Go back because of your afraid. Go back because of the perception. Go back because of the limitations that was on you. Go back! Hey, my neighbor. neighbor. Excuse me. Excuse I'm sitting still. I'm sitting but I'm really about to run up out of here. Who is there being as I am that will go into 
to the temple to try to save his life. I will not go in. Tell your neighbor, neighbor. I told you last week, say no. He says, no. <laughs> and I perceived that God had not sent him, but that they pronounced a wrong prophecy against me for Tobiah and somebody had hired him. You know people are paying to get in your way. Oh, come on. Come on. They want you to pay attention to them so you don't fulfill your vision. Come on, come on. They call you a distraction after distraction so you don't have time to work on yours. Come on. And they, they pull stuff from you. And watch this. They, they can never think that you can do something outside of them. So they try to keep you just in enough rope to be able to keep you close enough that you don't get too far. Hey, neighbor. You better learn how to say no. And don't you let the lie of religion and tradition lock you into just saying, I'm worshiping and I'm good. No, the world is available to you. Victory is available to you. Kingdoms are available to you. Come on. He says, I will not stay in the box you call church because kingdom is present. Go ahead and work. He said, Go ahead and say, so the law was finished the, 25, the 25th day of the month Enoch, the 52 days it was done. It came to pass that our enemies, when they heard thereof, the heathen and all that were about, they saw these things. They were much doubt in their eyes, for they had perceived that God had done a work with us. In your neighbor. Hey. Either you live in other people's perception, mm. or you live in the one that God given. And you can't even watch this. Stop making excuses for God bless you. Stop. Yeah, You're like this. What? 52 days. Y'all told me I couldn't do it. Y'all came at me. They tried to hurt me. Okay. The haters came. Come on. But they couldn't stop this purpose. Yeah. Why? I got a right perception about who I am. And I'm not, I'm not buying what you sell. This is what Paul, this is how Paul wrote it. You know, this way. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. To them, neighbor, I ain't proving nothing to nobody. I ain't, got, I ain't got time and I ain't got the energy to prove my, who I am to anybody. I just choose to be who I am. That's called race, race, wrestling in the grace of God. You're like, who do you think you ought to do that? I don't. I think of the grace of God. Unmerited favor, unearned power, unearned honor that I don't get. I get it because of with Jesus. Paul says, and that his grace bestowed upon me, not in vain, but I labor. Tell your neighbor, work with your grace, though. Here's what we don't miss. I got it, but I don't work with it. Nehemiah got the grace, but he knows how to protect it. I ain't hanging out with foolishness because I got grace on me to finish this. So I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't. Hey, come over here. Not right now, I ain't finished. Not right now, I'm working on something. Not right now, I got to do what I got to do right now. I got to do what I need to, not what I want to. And he has a right perception about where I am and who I am that I will not be distracted by other things or other people who want to box me in with fear, box me in with limitations, box me in with my past, box me in with... You know what I mean? No, no, no. I got a right perception about who I am. Are you getting something? Yes. yes. All right, give a little good shout. Come on. Let's go, Bernie. says this. This is the right perception. Until I roar. I may look like I'm weak, but I got strength. I may look like I'm alone, but I got a kingdom backing me up. I may look like I got nothing, but I got everything that pertains to life and godliness. You don't know what you're looking at. You can only see the natural. You don't see them with the mind of Judah. You don't even really know. You don't know I'm rolling with the mind of Judah. You don't see him. Come on, give a good shout. You don't want perception about yourself. Get out of that box you've been in. Get away from the people that got a wrong perception. See yourself as God sees you. Yeah. Yeah. The truth, I've been looking for that Mufasa piece, you know what I'm saying? When Simba was in there, he was strapped by them things, and he was like, he's like, and then all of a sudden, they just hear, and they trip. And Simba himself is shot. <laughs> I wish you could see how many of the adversaries and enemies and devils are so scared of you that you have no clue of. 
I want you to see that your perception of you is lesser than what God might be of you. And if it is, you've got to get a right one. You've been made in his image, which means you look like, oh, your daddy, come on. You've been made in his likeness. I don't care what man see, you look like your father. I don't care what anybody else see. I may look like this in the natural, but everything in the spirit says, you look like that. If you knew you was a lion, how would you be living? Come on. If you knew you was ruling, if you knew you was a king, if you knew you was over, not under, how would you be out of me? Let's go, bird. Let's go. He says, watch this perception also that moves me out of fleshly recognition. Matthew 13, 54, 53, 55. He says, when, when he was coming to his country, he taught them in the synagogue. And so much they was astonished where he had gotten his wisdom and mighty words. Is not this the carpenter's son? Is not this mother, mother's mother called Mary and his brothers James and Jose and Simon and Judas? And he's talking about Jesus when he comes into the temple, when he comes back in. Because sometimes, watch this, people have a perception of you, but you don't have to accept it. Yeah. He never lets them put a fleshly perception on who he is spiritually. Oh, God. Okay, let's do it this way. You know, Jesus, but God said this way in Jeremiah chapter 1. He said, I knew you before it was in your mother's womb. Yeah. Which means there was a you before you got flesh. Right. Woo, child, come on. And he knew that one and he knows this one. Yeah. And only in our mind is they different. So he says, watch this, he comes into his own country. And some of the craziest people that's going to trap you and come at you is the folk that know you in familiarity. You remember that time? I don't want to remember that time. I remember when you, I don't care if you remember everything. I don't remember. Matter of fact, even better, God remembers nothing because of the blood. Since you ain't better than God, I really ain't tripping off of what you think thinking about me right now. Matter of fact, I'm getting out of your box. Come on. You still stuck in then. I'm in now. I move beyond my past. I move beyond my wrong preposition. I bring what I used to be. I'm no longer that. I am now brand new in the kingdom and I'm acting like what I really am. Hey, neighbor, go ahead and act new. You got permission to act new. If any man be in Christ, you are new. You got God give you permission to be new. Or you are acting all new now. Yes. Why? I'm out the box. That's why. And if you're out the box, you can be new too. <laughs> he said, and the city got so much so they were they were God was wisdom. Some people are astounded by the fact you are still living. Yeah. Some people you come in, I, I'm not y'all. I can't remember why I went somewhere they said, I thought you were dead. I said. First I thought it was a bad thing. Then I realized Jesus is a bad somebody. <laughs> Why? Because what he's saying is, I've given you wisdom for application yeah. to reveal the kingdom, and you're still living in the midst of everything else you've done, everything else you've been. You're not being bound by it, but you're living on the top, not the bottom. You're living with me and for me. And now you become a demonstration of the kingdom of God no matter where you are. God help us. And you can tell us this. And sometimes you've got to make sure that the people that can only define you by family, you help them understand, that's not all there is to me. I am a mind, a body, and a spirit. You might have met my body, but you have no clue who I am. God, come on. God, come on. If you knew who I am right now, if you knew how I live right now, if you knew the victory that I've been getting over the last three, four years, you know how he healed me, delivered me, kept me, protected me, now got me with some right mind and right sense, got me clothed and sitting in my, you, you have no clue, baby. If you knew, you would be praising like God do to you. And what is amazing is people watch this will try to keep you where they met you. Now he is 30 something years old and he's still talking about, ain't this the problem or something? You don't remember when he was a baby? Then he start comparing you to everybody in your family. Oh, you know what I mean? They're like, well, you know, your sisters and your brother. Then he start talking about, well, I don't know why you acting all new because all your sisters is with us. It's right there. Verse 56, he says, are not all his sisters, are not they all with us? You know what somebody trip on? They trip on you moving to another level in your yeah, life. Yeah. And you're moving, watch this, come on, Sean, you're moving becomes a frustration to them because it's a revelation that they not. Come on. And what I love about Jesus, he's so smooth, this is how smooth he is. They talking and rolling and talking. Go ahead, look what he does. He says, and when they were offended, oh, 
God, oh God. You know, some folk offended at you. They are offended. And here's what they're offended with. That God chose you. Yes. They're offended that God saved you. Now, here is the other ways offense come. One the one way offense come. Promise is broken brings offense. You know what I mean? Violation, purposeful violations, that brings offense. But these other two is these two right here. Sometimes a broken expectation causes other people to be offended. I didn't expect Jesus to be God. I didn't expect you to be looking so good this season of your life. I didn't expect that you would have a right job and a right mind. I didn't expect that your kids are still doing fine. I didn't expect, and now they get offended because now you kept on moving while they did. Stop tripping on them motherfuckers. They're tripping on you. They're like, no, you know, I'm I didn't expect you. And then sometimes you blew their limitations out the water. You come in, you know, you had your hair did that day, you just walked in, you looking good, and the last time they saw you, you what? You come in, oh, who you, who she thinks she is? <laughs> I think I'm me. I just came from the hairdresser, yeah. got a new dress, bought it, and I'm walking with it. Got some heels on, and oh my, and ain't made no excuse about it, and really don't care what you're gonna do. I paid more with my money, so just don't bother me. Oh, yeah. I'm gonna say what I'm saying. Stop trying to sink yourself down to a level God don't Shakes you up, puts you in some fire and shines you up, and now you want to hide. The devil? <laughs> and watch this. It doesn't, it, 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 it really, watch this. Their mindset ends up limiting them and causing him to keep on moving forward. Do you know, they could have got so much from Jesus, but they didn't. And get nothing but offense. This is Matter of fact, I couldn't do too much with it. So here, you can try to help. But if they don't take the help, make up your mind like Jesus and keep on moving. Oh, you need to go ahead and give a clap right here. Give me a clap right the next verse says, he departed. <laughs> he went up like, no, I'm here. I'm, I'm with y'all. I'm here. You got the wrong perception? You got the wrong perception? I'm trying to help. You got the wrong perception? I'm going to do a little something. Okay. You got the flu? Heal you. All right. You, got it. you don't believe who I am? All right. You still tripping on my family? You still tripping on my history? You know, you remember us inside the, you know, the baby pen? Okay. You ain't getting no healing. Okay. All right. Listen. Why? Their perception was hindered there. Yes. Don't let somebody else's perception become a limitation That's to who right. you are. Right. Let's go, bird. Let's go up. Oh, what do you see? What do you see? Y'all scared to say stuff. Now, your perception, man, Mr. Randy, up What do you see? What kind of woman? An old lady? It's an old lady? It's a young lady. What is it? Same situation, but it is two different functions. There is an old lady. That line where the line is, that's her mouth. The, the hook where the young girl's chin is, that's her nose. Same situation, different perception. Do me a favor, if you still can't see, close your eyes and open them again. Tell your mind, mind, there's a young lady there, then open it. Then close your eyes, open your eyes, and say there's an old woman there, help me see. You know what happens? You had to change your mind to change your perception. That's right. Oh, stop. Oh, stop. Now ask yourself, what's up with that job you want? How you looking at that? Ah, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Because the one you want to get out of, there was a day when you shot it when they said you hired. You hired. Ah, that job. Ah, that job. When I said a job, ain't none of y'all shot. Yeah, that's right. Isn't it amazing your perception when you're out of sight of a thing than your perception when you're in it? Remember that your next because watch this. Adverse is gonna come, but you gotta have the right perception about the adversity. 
Come on, the enemy's gonna come, but you gotta have the right perception about the enemy. Come on, situation's gonna show up, but you gotta have the right perception about it when it comes. And I gotta see beyond the natural, and I gotta be willing to close my eyes and pray, God, give me your perception, not my perception. I know it's more than one. I know I can see the first visible thing, but I need to see spiritually what you want me to see. Sometimes, you know what, before you answer the problem, step back. All right, it's a problem, it's a problem. Oh, hold up. Wow, give me wisdom. Yes. See it the way you see it. Yes. Instead, of, instead of losing your mind, ask it. God, let your mind be in me. So I can deal with this thing the right way. Somebody say, how are you? Let's go, let's go, bro. Says this, Matthew 16 says this, when Jesus came to the ghost of uh, Philippi, he says this, he asks the disciples, who do men say that I am? Sometimes, watch this, we get trapped by limited perceptions and definitions of ourselves. And they're not by you, they're from people around you. Are you hearing me? Jesus is rolling again. Here he is, rolling. He's rolling. Then he says this quick question. Because Jesus already knows who he is. But he's trying to find out who the people closest to me know who I am. He's trying to figure out is my reputation, is my identification, and the, and the assumptions of people. Which one are people walking walk with me with? And they walk with you on those three levels. Reputation, assumption, and a real identification of who you are. And what's amazing is, first thing he says, who do men say that I am? They say, some say you John the Baptist. Some say you Elijah. Some say you Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said, all right. What do you say? <laughs> What's your perception? Now I'm going to park here for a minute. It's not only is the revelation of what they were seeing from the outside, but it's also progression in the idea of what happens in the kingdom when we come to Jesus. When you first get saved, John the Baptist is the key of salvation. Sometimes people only see Jesus through being saved. Be saved. That's it, stop. I'm saying, I go to church, I asked him, ask him to come out on time. Say, John the Baptist. Elijah is power. Yeah, power. Because they see him raise the dead and all that kind of stuff. They said, the only cat that ever did that was Elijah. And these people are like, now let me just lay hands on you. Power, the power, power. I'm going to pray. Let me pray for you. I'm going to change that power. It's good. I think there's another level sometimes people get to and say, you know what? Prophetically and spiritually, they've been led by heaven. But then they get to a Peter revelation, a right perception of who Jesus is. Peter says, Thou art the Christ, mm -hmm. the Son of the living God. Mm -hmm. He says, He is not just the one that brings me into salvation. He is not just the one that gives me power. He is not just the one, watch this, that leads and guides my life spiritually, but He is God all by Himself. Say your name. I got to get a right perception of who Jesus is in my life. Because if you notice, 14 says that. 15 says, if you get a right perception of God, then God can give you a right perception of yourself. Jesus turns around right after that, and then he says, what he say? He says, he Christ. This is what he says, blessed are thou, son of our Jonah. Flesh and blood did not reveal that to you, but my Father which is in heaven. Then he says this, Peter, thou art Peter. So if you know who God is, then you can get to know who God made you. Yes. Oh, come on. Before we and you came to Christ, we thought we were somebody. But after you got saved, you found out you were somebody else. A good somebody else. Don't get me wrong. But you go, man, there's purpose up in here. There is vision up in here. There's spirit in there. There's direction and wisdom in here. And he wants to use me to benefit his kingdom and his process in the earth. But I needed to get a right revelation of him so I can get a right revelation of me. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's why he says, upon this rock, I'm going to build my church. And Jason Hill will not fulfill the last one. He goes out real quick. Say, bro. What is that? Two fingers. Who else? What is that? Some people said vague. Some people said Jesus. It's both of them. Ain't nobody wrong. It's an amazing thing. Everybody can see the same thing and see different. It's the same thing. See different. How different are you going to be able to look at this situation when you include God in? Okay. I'm not just trying to hear from the Spirit. I'm not just trying to see my salvation. I'm not just trying to get saved from it. But I want to see God in me. Yes. I want to see His power. I want to see His presence. I want to see all of who He is in every situation of my life. I'm going to that word. Remember the word about it. The one that I, I want to help me is the one about David. And it's David about having a right perception about the bad situations that come against you in your life. All day that Goliath shows up, there are four different perceptions going on at the same time. 
Yeah, I'm pretty much going to sort of get out. So, so, so David comes to bring food to his brothers. He gets to his brothers, and they are standing there, facing Goliath. They are on the 40th day of not moving. Four. But somebody shows up with a different perception. <laughs> Eliad, another family member, matter of fact, his oldest brother, who's upset because he got pride and he's mad at who David is, is he mad that David has a greater perception than him at a different age? Don't get mad at other folk because you see differently than them, even if they're older than you. Come on, don't get mad at them. Right back. Listen, he ends up delivering Eliab, but Eliab is mad with him and offended at him. As a matter of fact, rather than accept David's perception, he puts David down. Come on. Who are you? Why you come down and do little ruddy stuff? You ain't nothing. Where the little sheep at? The little sheep. Who wants the little few sheep you got? By the way, you know why people come after you? Do they see greatness in you, and you can see further than them, and they start hating on you because you got a future that is so great that they watch this. The only way they can think they can be better than you is, make, is to make you get out of it yourself. And they hope to be able to say something to you to make you so frustrated you don't go after your own future. Oh, this is family. Where the little sheep you got? Yeah, that little car you got. That little home you got. That little job you got. Are you mad? Because you know I'm going to eventually be king. Come on! And you mad, watch this. I'll face giants you won't. Yeah. See, some folk mad because you're facing stuff they will never face. you dealing with stuff they scared to even deal with. They won't even think of dealing with family. They won't even think about dealing with bills. They won't even think about dealing with kids. They won't even think about that. But here you come with your bad little self. <laughs> And, 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 listen, and got a little bit of faith, ain't got a whole lot, but I got enough that I can take out the giant that's been hindering everybody else from moving forward. Yeah. For 40 days, the whole army is trapped by fear and intimidation has bound them. You know what intimidation does? It tells what it's going to do to you, but it never does it. So you made it. So, so, so intimidation will keep shouting day after day after day after day to try to get you to believe its vision rather than the one God gave you. God. And if you like the army, you believe it. Because fear got you. An army couldn't fight one man. One more time. An army wouldn't fight one man. Now, I don't mean no harm. They could have just, you know, the logistics battle was that you could give us a champion, you take a champion. Forget that. The whole army should have took the man out. Yeah. <laughs> but we stay in one spot because of intimidation. We stay in one spot because of what's this our perception. And what blesses me with David is that even somebody that's in my family, I say, no, I, I love you, but I'm moving forward. That's right. Then he comes and the next person he has to talk to is Saul. But sometimes the next person that will stop you if you get past your family will be somebody in authority. Yeah. Mm. Oh, yes. oh, Jesus. Oh, oh Jesus. Yes. Saul says, How are you going to fight him? You a little boy. He says, Listen, again, wrong perception. You don't know my history or my victories. You don't know, all you see is who I am fleshly, but you don't know who I am spiritually. I got a right perception about who I am, and I know what God gave me. God help me. And I know the victories that he gave me over the bear, over the lion, and I beat all of them, so I'm going to beat him too. As a matter of fact, while I'm at it, I'm going to get the victory, get my money, and I'm going to get ahead. Why? No matter who in my family says something, no matter who in authority says something, I know that God of glory is with me because he helped me kill the bear, he helped me kill the lion, so he's going to help me kill you too. Ah. Why? He got a right perception. He ain't fighting by himself. I'm fighting with God. God is my back. God is my front. You can't get to me without getting to God. How are you going to do that? Now, now, let me give you these keys of David. I'm going to close real quick. I'm going to close my Keys of David, number one. Key of David is, David does not try to take other people's experiences to get his victory. He doesn't take somebody else's experiences to get his victory. Mm. Some of them don't work. Somebody, you try some other stuff, y'all know it don't work. 
Saul said, here, take my clothes, take my sword, take my stuff, and fight. Saul was trying to give him an experience, watch this, but he didn't want to fight himself. Watch it when folk give you stuff and it don't work for them. Amen. And they so busy holding on to position, they don't want to be in confrontation. Mm. Mm -hmm. Ooh, this is good, this is good, this is good. They tell you to fight, but they won't go that self. That's right. <laughs> Come on. Then he says, now hold on. Then the Bible says, then he says, David said, okay, I can't take that stuff. I can't fight with your experience. I gotta fight with what the presence of God is in my life. And what, watch this. The gifts, the authority that he's given. He took a staff, because he was a sheep, apparently. So he takes his authority. Tell me, excuse me. Stop trying to bind the enemy. And bending his authority. The stones. He takes the stones and was following them and say, Your own grace. Your own grace. Only operate in your own grace. Five smooth stones. Five is known for grace. You know what God calls you to do. And stop trying to do stuff you know good and well God has called you to do. Come on. If it's way too high, that might not be it. If God ain't said it, that ain't it. Now, if He say it, He will give you the grace for it. Come on. So he takes that staff of authority, the grace that he's been given, watch this, the gifts that he got, the slingshot. He takes his grace and his gift. And he begins fighting the enemy. Now he stops there. He had a pouch on him, which means he only carried what he needed. Stop carrying people and stuff you really don't need. God, come on. These are keys that David says, I'm about to take out a giant. And the reason why he was fighting them, for real, for real, he wasn't even fighting them. Watch this, for the arm. The Bible says, I was fighting you so I can move forward. You go back in the text, you're going to find someone say this. David said, what happens to the man that kills the giant? <laughs> he says, you're going to marry the king's daughter. Mm. You're going to take care of your taxes for your entire family. Yes. You're going to live in a whole other place, and you're going to be put in the king's line. David was getting ahead, y'all. He wasn't afraid to move forward. You have a right perception in the midst of all of it. I want you to close your eyes and pray. Father, we even now. In the name of Jesus. I pray that just like we opened our eyes and saw that young lady. When we opened our eyes and saw that old lady. I pray today, Lord, that you would help us open our eyes this time and see who you are in our life. Open our eyes and see that the God of heaven is with us. Open our eyes and see that you're greater in my situation. Open our eyes and see a right perception about myself. Open my eyes, God, and may the seat, Father God, that no matter the situation, you have given me the gifts, the anointing, the authority, the ability, the grace to deal with what I'm facing, God. I pray this time we open our eyes, God, you give us a right perception, God. Give us a right perception. I pray the prayer that Elijah prayed for the servant. He was with a servant and they were bound up. They were surrounded by a whole army. And while that army was around them, he came out and told them, he said, man of God, we're surrounded. Elijah came back and said, Lord, open his eyes. The Bible says that when he opened, the servant opened his eyes, he saw chariots of fire all around them. He told them this, there be more that are for us than are against us. I don't know where you are today, but I want you to know this, that all of heaven is standing at attention. All of the angels are waiting on your call. That the word of God, the spirit of God is saying, you know what? We got your back. We're here for you. If you can just see who we are. Stop looking at the natural world. There's a spiritual world. His eyes are not seen, nor ears heard, nor has it in the heart of man. What God has say for you. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to go ahead and open your eyes and stand up. I want you to go ahead and bless him like, you know what? You see your victory. You see the